Hello Disruptors, how easy is it to create a viable business idea using only AIs? In this series, we look at just that. So in this video, we'll be generating ideas for a company and analyzing the results that come up. Uh, well, the idea that came up, it's, uh, it's a group travel planning platform. Uh, so planning and organizing travel can be a challenging task. So especially when it comes to choosing a destination that everyone agrees on. A uh, SaaS startup that offers a platform uh, to easily narrow down the group travel destinations based on individual preferences and budget could be a compelling solution. A uh, platform could also help book accommodations, activities match to everyone's preferences with the ease of planning process. Uh, large market size, um, over $164 billion by 2022 for the global SaaS market. Amazing. Amazing. What are your initial thoughts on that? Well, I think uh, I'm I'm intrigued to see what direction we're going in, um, and I can I can see there um, we've got a, a solution. So um, so uh, should we? Oh no, we're I accidentally for it. created another idea. <laughs> uh, All right. So we'll utilize that idea next. But we have a solution now uh, that came up, which was let's just hide that idea. We'll go to that idea afterwards. Um, another potential solution for the uh, pain points of planning and organizing group channel could be creating a mobile app. It loves its mobile apps, uh, but it is software as a service <laughs> um, that allows users to input their individual preferences and budget, uh, suggest destinations that match those criteria, can provide recommendations for activities and accommodations within the selected destination. Um, this solution could be particularly attractive to millennials and younger generations, et cetera. So, uh, so what do you think? Well, I think uh, uh, if I'm being honest with you, my gut reaction here is I feel like it's been done about a billion times over. Um, and yeah, it's the, 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 there might be a gap in the market, but I, I, I feel I feel that it's, it's just been covered by so many places out there. I think there's one that's, um, oh, I'd, I'd have to find it on my phone, but one where you go and say, like, this is my budget, this is where I'm starting from, I'm willing to go anywhere, um, and it comes up with like automatically generates the location, uh, the flights, the accommodation, all in line with your, yeah. your your budget. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I agree with you. It's a great idea, but it's also an idea that has possibly been done before. There's no unique selling point of what it's saying right now. Um, I'm not 100% sure if it's really that great an idea. What I would do potentially is make it so it also mixes in with, instead of it just being vacations, it could also be group activities in general. Um, okay. So, uh, but I mean, again, it's this, You're just because something is there before doesn't mean that it's, oh. Yeah, but you, you're entering, entering such a crowded just, market. Mm like such a crowded market and yeah. booking.com and all the rest of it they're already there travel agents are essentially doing exactly what we're talking about um and yeah. uh, and, a, and loads of the major uh, travel um companies out there have already got that built into their website and the excursions and the everything like that so i don't know it just yeah. feels very generic Yeah, it really does. I mean, the report's taking a little bit longer to uh, <laughs> to create. Um, uh, so we'll... Uh, well, if we were looking we'll to go and create a lean... It, it's... If we were going to look at a, a lean uh, version of this, what would you what would you do? All right. Well, if I was going to do a lean version, then probably I'd actually go to... I'd focus on a certain demographic. And maybe that mm -hmm. demographic would be someone who's focused on a budget uh and it's looking to do something if something fun with a group of people to be able to network has a bit of excitability i'd start personally with uh with students that are in university maybe first year second year students um possibly working in, in a way where i'm not necessarily an app but i could be like a booth or something that attends mm -hmm. a student a student union so i can get a great amount of exposure and, and, and work tailored to that individual um yeah thing so uh, how about yourself I definitely feel that I'd probably go down the route of getting involved inside the corporate sector and offering excursions directly to them and um, taking uh, taking people out on you know like activities etc not actually personally actually doing it but 
you know, like connecting them to it and organizing the travel for them to those areas, etc. Could be a fantastic way to celebrate the summer or equally towards the Christmas period. So you're definitely going to see yeah. booms and trough, you know, like peaks and troughs in this market. Oh, yeah, definitely. And there's always going to be the ups and downs when it comes to the uh, uh, where it opens up. So, I mean, here we've got the SWOT analysis in front of us. Um, the strengths, it does say, yeah, obviously for younger generations, which we've just talked about before, um, there's a good amount of mobile technology familiarity. Um, there's automatic, automation of destinations um, based on use of suggestions. Again, it is a good thing. It has been proven out there in the market. So, sure, it is It is a it is something that's proven and accommodating group travel. Um, I think now more than ever after the pandemic scenario, people do want to network. So, I mean, there are, it does have benefits to it that it's attractive. I'd, I'd say though, those weaknesses are in line with what we kind of be, be considering, you know, like the limits of the mm. quality of the activity and the accommodation. Yeah. You, it's up to you as the provider to be able to go and, um, mitigate that as best as what you can but there's due diligence you're going to have to do there's limited um limited uh, reference you can make to TripAdvisor or any other uh resource out there for it um but yep. this is the most complicated one the need to understand the user preferences and to make the best uh, suggestions now that's limited to the user input and we're talking yep. about a highly complicated <clears throat> app here where every single um activity every single accommodation would have to be put yeah. in relative to the personality type of those characters that are going to be input in their their, their, yeah. their element it's not as simple as hey here's a list of activities yeah yeah exactly i mean we've got to bear in mind we were looking for a uh, you know a service um so software as a service so we have to take the app really in in mind when we're thinking about this so i mean the opportunities Growing demand for travel and tourism services. This is true again after the pandemic. People are wanting to actually go more, and uh, since you know ages, it's been people have been looking to travel more and more as well. Um, and the uh, ability to tap into a new market with younger generations. Um, I, I do think that that is a possibility. I mean, as I said, um, we actually have a cousin, um, and he started off a um, a travel company, and it's getting some traction and everything. And his group travel, so he goes and organizes it with people in different countries etc as well yeah and it's good it's nice but uh, but making it into a software as a service is you know definitely wow. um definitely a challenge and i think that's exactly exactly it i mean what what what's um what's demonstrated there in the threats uh the limited marketing budget you, you could be spending hundreds of thousands on getting this app out there um and that's not yeah. just in the in the development that's just in the marketing <laughs> Um, yeah. to, to, to go and get it out there and um and it, like the competition from specialized travel apps is massive we identified that at the very beginning that's uh that that's that's essentially what we're, we're probably um gonna have as the as the largest issue moving forward yeah for sure for sure i mean it's i think overall we do have um it's not a bad idea. You have the competition. If you have severe finances behind you, possibly, but bear in mind, if you're going to be looking at demonstrating for people that are possibly also on a budget, then the amount of profitability that you'll get from that is going to be limited um, as well. And I think that we have to we have to take that into account when we're doing our when we're doing our ratings. So yeah, I'm just going to pull up the uh, the ratings now. So I have to start sharing that screen. Um, and if you recall, yeah. So you were going to say? Hey, well, no, just uh, just I think it's uh, I think we're probably both on the same kind of page <laughs> that um, that this one is just not going to really cut it. Um, but let's uh, I'm interested to see what actually happens. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, let's start off as we as we always do with innovation and feasibility. Uh, out of five, what do you think? That one like it's an easy one for me the it, it's it's out there the only thing that's interesting about this one is that you're putting in your character type the things that you're yeah. into and it's going to give you or provi provide you with uh, with something in something exciting but that's yeah. that's not much of a leap from the other things that are out there so not really that innovative 
Yeah, no, I agree. There's a lot of stuff that's out there. I think there is opportunity to make it innovative over time. However, as an initial idea, uh, starting points and its feasibility as initial idea, I'm just not there. I'm going to give it a one as well. Um, what about the market potential? Oh, travel market's huge, obviously. Um, so uh, I, I, like that's not going anywhere. Obviously, COVID, stay, stay at home, um, staycation, sorry um are uh, are obviously huge um i think if this app was out there with the right marketing strategy with the right um occurrence out there etc would that would this be the one that you want to go and uh, take forward uh, yeah i'd definitely try it i'd definitely be interested in it and i think the market probably would as well so i'll, I'll give that a uh, i'll give that a no no actually you know what the problem with it is that because you're going into a flooded market, the market potential there actually is quite low. So you're going to be fighting against that. So even though I would good, I would give it a five, because you're going to be challenged by every single other thing out there. It's a two yeah. for me. Bit of a bit of a change and a turn on the heel right there. So, I had to. I had <laughs> but to. I agree. I, I do agree. I was going to bring that challenge up. I do think that. I do think that in the age of artificial intelligence and AI and machine learning, et cetera, right now, that there is a possibility at a point to be able to, you know, chew away at parts of that market. Uh, I would say that because the market is growing with uh, obviously people being more and more looking forward to, you know, traveling and doing more group activities, et cetera, I would give it a three um, for its potential. It's just if you can reach that potential. And that's why I'm, I'm just sticking in the middle. I suppose for that one. Uh, how about the sustainability and scalability? They're like zero. <laughs> it's a one um, because uh, <laughs> because like as I say, you're going into this flooded market. The second that you start to go and do well at it, everyone else who's in that market is going to start to implement that. And guess what? They've been doing it for way longer. They've got bigger yeah. <laughs> budgets involved for it. The, like you are just not going to be able to compete. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. I would say I, I'm going to give it a one as well, but I'm also going to add to that in the fact that even if you were to start to scale, either you're going to get crushed or you're going to get bought. So the company itself, it's not going to be scaled. So um, I, I don't you're think... Gonna, you're going to be bought yeah. for way less than what the market's going to... Like, you're going to be bought yeah. at a level where it's just not interesting. And you will have yeah. put in so much work. And then if you're not bought, you're crushed. So that's the yeah. option. Like you're either back, bought out or you're crushed. So yeah. forget about it. Zero. Not yeah. interested. <laughs> what about customer value proposition? Right. Look, customer value proposition. I said to myself, if it was out there, I'd probably try it. Um, so uh, I, th I think in the ideal situation, in the way that it, you know, like if it worked, the way that we think it would work hmm. it's a it's a five it's really valuable something that's going to go and tell me exactly what to go and do for the budget that i want and go and get yeah 100 yeah, percent hours and hours and hours of work uh taken out of that so so yeah amazing yeah. I am inclined completely to agree with that. I mean, I, I've I've been to a couple of countries uh, earlier on this year since ChatGPT came out. I've been I've travelled uh, even within the UK. So on three vacations or so that I've gone so far, I used ChatGPT to tell me what I should be doing and give me my schedule <laughs> and things like that. And it gave me links and all that sort of thing. So you know, if if I could get something that would customize exactly to what I wanted by default, and I didn't have to do anything. It will be fantastic. It's just getting there. But but yeah. in that particular thing, proper value proposition is a five for me. It's, it's really good in that aspect. How about risk and regulatory compliance? So there are loads of regulations with um, with this type of thing yeah. as well. You have huge amount of risk in terms of liability, et cetera. Obviously, that liability is transferred, but you are going to have complaints. Like this thing didn't end up the way that, you, that we thought it was going to be. Because your promise, you've got to remember, your promise at the very beginning is we're going to provide you with something that fits exactly for you. All you've got to do is fill in this 50 que question disc profile questionnaire um and then once you've done that 25 to 30 minutes we're going yeah. to start to go and give you like the everything about yourself and then um, 
and if you go and recommend you know like if the system recommends something that's rubbish you're just gonna get beaten down uh, it's a one yeah yeah i i'm again inclined to agree with you on that sort of on that sort of thing it's well i mean i don't think it's so risky as a one i'd probably give it a two but i mean it's there is a lot of stuff that gets involved and it's just not just too much of a headache um with the with people complaining i do think over time if you have a smart enough uh, algorithms in there that it that a lot of the customer complaints and things people will start to understand because they know that there's issues with it um but uh it will gradually iron itself out but i'm, I'm not going to get more than a two um, definitely i mean inventory. if you if you were going towards a lean uh business model then obviously that's uh that, that that's a little bit more interesting and you can certainly create good value out out of that um if, if that's you if that's your bag and you're willing to go and throw yourself into it but in this yeah. particular example in this particular implementation I'm yeah. not, I'm unsurprised by his number. No, same, same sort of thing. It's uh, it's quite low, twenty two. I mean, not surprisingly, it is right at the bottom of our list. Um, yeah, we're definitely not going to be looking at going forwards with that <laughs> as uh, as ourselves. Thanks for joining us in this dialogue. We hope it was disruptive. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, watch more of our videos. Keep dreaming big and making your mark on the world.